Sometimes you want a deep, multi-hour game to get invested in. Sometimes you want a game that challenges you against other players. And sometimes you just want a game that does one thing and does it perfectly. If you like fast-paced 2D precision platformers with tight controls, gorgeous pixel sprite graphics and an amazing soundtrack, then today's first game is for you. My name is Groudon and I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order to find the hidden gems among the piles of garbage, and today we're doing a two-for-one review, and the first game up is... Sprout. Let's begin. Unless you've been living under a proverbial rock for the last five years, you've probably heard of Celeste, a fast-paced 2D precision platformer with tight controls, gorgeous pixel sprite graphics, and an amazing soundtrack. And if that sounds familiar, it's because I said it literally 30 seconds ago, and because Sprout takes heavy inspiration from Celeste, or more specifically, Celeste Classic. Now, I can't comment on Celeste very much, simply because I've never played it. I know. It's on my wish list, just sitting and waiting for a day when I have time to spare. Something that is in very short supply these days, thanks to the absolutely ridiculous growth of the channel. Thank you for that, by the way. At the time of writing, we're almost a quarter of the way to 100,000 subscribers, and that's just wild. Sprout is actually a relatively recent game, releasing onto Steam in 2020, but unfortunately it's a bit difficult to find. Pro tip for any game devs in the audience, putting hyphens on either side of your game title might look cool, but unfortunately it makes it difficult to search for. In the world of Sprout, the ancient gems that hold life in the balance have vanished through mysterious portals, and it's up to you, Bread Breddington, or Bread for short, to save the day. So before we get into the game's mechanics, let's take a quick peek at the options menu. A peek is all that is needed, as is the case for many games of this style, as there are no graphical options to select other than full screen or windowed mode. Separate controls for music and sound effects are always welcome, and in a lovely touch, the game supports both Xbox and PS4 controllers, and actually adjusts the button prompts accordingly. That's a level of attention to detail that I wouldn't expect for a small game like this, but trust me, it's noticed and appreciated. Right, onto the game itself. As far as platformers go, Sprout has everything that you'd expect. A jump button, a wall jump, and a dash that recharges when touching the ground after use. The dash is the core mechanic of the game, and it is utilised in some great ways which we'll cover soon. What is important to know, and that took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out when I played this live, is just how the dash mechanic works. Thankfully, the first few levels act as tutorials, teaching you the core mechanics of the game. The first level teaches you how to wall jump, and the second level teaches you how to do a horizontal dash. Unless you're me. Apparently, I'm a bit dumb. Either that, or the game is flexible enough to allow for multiple ways of solving levels. Yeah, let's go with that. Level 3 introduces keys and locks, level 4 shows you spikes, and level 5 adds in blocks that have to be dashed through to destroy them. And now because I deserve to be embarrassed for this, let's watch for a bit and see how far I got in the live stream before realising that the dash is multi-directional. Uh, we can just boom, straight over. So I need to do a jump dash to break through those, and then up we go. Precision platformers really live or die. Jump across, grab that, grab that, drop down, back, yes. So I can jump through like that. Up we go, my fault. Make sure I dash in that direction. Woods. I wonder if I'm meant to actually go back and get that to get some kind of hidden collectible. Let's take a look. Let's grab that, jump off. It. Because hey, it's all about giving a little bit more replayability to the game. I think I need to actually overshoot this one. Yep. And we go up over the top there. Grab the moon and back. Quite spikes on the top. Didn't see that. Let's get up there. Okay, dash forward and back to break those, and there we go. Gather. Getting a bit more use out of the dash now than we did before. I wonder how much the devs sitting there laughing, just going, yeah, yeah, yeah fell for that. <laughs> I'm gonna do this one. Dash across, wall jump up, yeah. Mm. There we go, got it. Don't. Oh my. Well, I wish I'd known that earlier. Level 19. I made it through 18 levels before realising that the dash allows you to move in different directions. And to make things worse, the dev, Sparky Software, was in the chat while I was playing. I am so sorry that you had to sit through that. That will be a mark of shame that I will bear forever. Let's move on while I still have some dignity. 
Despite my lack of ability to function like a regular human being, I did work my way through all four areas and then unlock a fifth, final, more challenging area. And every single level felt super satisfying to beat. Because bread resets so quickly after death, the deaths themselves don't feel too punishing. In fact, there were a few occasions where I died in the same way multiple times in a row simply because my brain hadn't had the time to process what I had done wrong, so I just repeated it. However, taking things slow isn't quite in the spirit of the game. If you have keen eyes, you may have noticed that there's both a timer and a death counter at the top of the screen. Sprout actually features several achievements that require beating the game in less than a specified time or with zero deaths. I love this because it adds optional replayability to each of the areas. If speed isn't your thing but you do want a little more challenge, then good news! There are also optional relics to collect. These appear after collecting the gem, often forcing you to backtrack through a more challenging path in order to grab them. This is a way of layering optional difficulty into a game that I absolutely love. Not every level has a relic, and some of them are quite sneaky. For example, it might appear right as you're about to pass through a door. This means you'll need to constantly keep a lookout for them and have some pretty quick reflexes too. Each world in Sprout also adds in new mechanics for you to learn about and adapt to. The second world features spikes that appear after you pass over a surface, the third world has fast moving fireballs, the fourth uses darkness as a mechanic requiring you to extinguish light sources to proceed, while also causing you to die if it becomes too dark. The final world introduces lasers that act as very hot gates, burning bread to a crisp if he touches them, turning him into toast. Touching a switch will reset the lasers, creating some light puzzle elements in the middle of all the platforming. In the majority of situations though, speed and precision are your best allies. There is something that is inherently satisfying about playing Sprout. The micro levels are challenging enough that you feel good for solving them and short enough that you're just getting constant hits of dopamine. The controls are tight, everything feels precise and any mistakes feel like your own fault. This is a masterclass in movement, up there with the likes of Super Meat Boy and the complete other end of the spectrum to something like Tabitzog. Small details like the screen shake when dashing add to the audio visual feedback and the icing on top is the chip tune soundtrack. Composed by Fail Positive, the music is simply sublime. Each world has its own unique theme and they set the energy and mood wonderfully. Sadly, while the artist is on Spotify, the game soundtrack isn't, but it is on Bandcamp. I've dropped a link in the description to the soundtrack, so feel free to go and take a listen. Here's a few snippets for you to enjoy. All in all, it's hard to find faults with Sprout. With 100 levels spread over the 5 worlds, you'll likely get around an hour of playtime, or more if you want to go for some of the more difficult challenges. Or if you're a speedrunner, you might even be able to finish the entire game in under 6 minutes. Good luck if you attempt that challenge. At 669 Canadian, or your regional equivalent, this game is definitely worth your time and even your money. If you happen to be watching this when the video goes live, great news. The devs are kindly putting the game on sale for a limited time. So if you weren't lucky enough to win a key in the giveaway that was held on our Discord, link in the description if you want to join, then right now is the best time to pick it up. So with all of that in mind, my final rating for Sprout is a dash out of 10. It's fast and fun, but might feel like it's over a little too soon. Now, on to game two. If you've been around for a bit, you might know this channel is as much about the highs as it is the lows. We've covered one amazing game already in this video, so what are the odds of a second? Well, looking at the stats, roughly 20%, so not great. Let's pull off the band-aid and look at the second game for this video, simply called Dot. Or at least that's what it's called in the Steam store. In the library, it's called Zinaru the Great. With inconsistencies like that, you know you're in for a treat. This game released in 2020 as well, and the store page is… certainly something. 
There's no trailer, no images, not even a description. The minimum specs apparently don't require any memory or storage. The best way I can describe Zinru the Great is your mum saying, we have Warframe at home. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. First, let's look at the options menu, or rather where the options menu should be, because this game has opted not to have one. I would also like to mention that when installing the game, I was required to agree to the terms and conditions of not one, but two separate contracts. It could be because it uses the Unreal Engine, or it could be that the devs, Gamma Ray Chamber, are very protective of this amazing new IP that will surely go viral. So into the game. We play as an unnamed female character who is possibly a cyborg given the metallic appearance, and they shall now be known as Hunter Is. They might have been Zinru, but there isn't anything in the game to indicate that, so for all we know, Zinru is the name of this dude standing over here. There is no tutorial in the game, but it does have controller compatibility. Again, this could simply be the engine and not the devs. The UI is incredibly basic, to the point where the gold counter in the lower right still has the white background around the image of the gold bars. The two bars in the top left are thankfully instantly recognisable to anyone even vaguely familiar with the Souls-like games, representing health and stamina. In this initial space station themed room, the only things you can do are pick up the nearby floating sword and kill the conveniently positioned enemy. Interestingly, picking up the sword does equip it, but it overlays the texture on top of the default swords. So now Hunter is begins to look a bit like Edward Scissorhands. Trying to move around this cramped space will result in the camera constantly zooming in and out due to it colliding with the environment, which made me feel rather nauseous and I apologise in advance for all of you watching. I later discovered that part of the reason for this is that the camera treats enemies like objects and will get stuck on them, causing it to zoom in all the way. Movement feels terrible, way too fast for the size of the space and the jump animation is truly something to behold. As far as I can tell, the twitching is caused by the animation resetting before Hunter Is touches the ground again, so it repeats the jump animation several times in one movement. In addition, the player model shrinks to a tiny version when landing. I have no idea why this happens, but it does. In order to proceed, you will need to pick up the sword and kill the nearby enemy and then walk into the nearby bench. For reasons unknown, this will teleport you into an ancient ruin. There are elements of technology here, as though it is in the process of being uncovered, and at first glance it looks… well, it looks alright. Certainly better than the last room. This area is larger, so you'll encounter less camera issues, but not none. There's no instructions or direction given here, but gamer instincts dictate that the enemy should be killed and the gold should be collected. As the first order of the day then, let's get into a fight. Behold! Combat. It's as disappointing as you would expect. There's no audio visual feedback other than the sound of a swinging blade. I barely noticed that Hunter Is has taken damage, not that you're really ever in any danger of dying. Every enemy will die in a couple of hits, so just spam the attack button until it's over. As you watch the gameplay, I'd like you to pay attention to the impressive level design that includes stairs that you can't run up, piles of rubbles that you can fall through, and walls that both fail to touch the floor and can be walked through from one side. Once you've finished exploring the room, all that's left to do is stand on the button over here and then walk up to this wall of dirt, which through some miracle of geomancy will teleport you into an incredibly cramped medieval monastery which just does wonderful things for the camera. If you have keen eyes, you'll also notice that the gold counter has reset to zero. That's right, the gold does nothing. If you were expecting there to be a shop to purchase upgrades, then you really need to lower your expectations. I tested it, and you don't even need to collect a minimum amount to progress to this area. It serves literally no purpose. There's only one way to go, so jump over the bombs, and the game's done. I find this screen incredibly insulting for two reasons. Firstly, they couldn't be bothered to type, you win, it's just, win. And secondly, the only button you can press is replay, as if they expect you to be so impressed by that experience that you'd want to jump in and do it again. Now, during the stream, I did, mostly because I thought that maybe I'd missed something, but no, I hadn't. That is all this game has to offer and it wants you to pay 119 Canadian or your regional equivalent for the privilege of this experience. Checking the Steam reviews, of which there are a grand total of four, confirms this. You play one room, mashing mouse one on everything, then you're done. 
four minutes to beat, with killing enemies, otherwise you can run through the portals in the three levels and beat it in 30 seconds. It was definitely remarkable. Just no. For most games, I want to analyse them to an extent and provide some feedback on how the game could be improved. The best advice I can give, and this will sound harsh, is to scrap the whole thing and try again. Honestly, I think it's the right thing to do. Because this feels to me like it was simply built to test mechanics, not to create an actual game. And as a concept, that's fine, but don't charge people money for it and pretend it's a real game. Take what you learned and start again, but only after taking the time to create a plan or even an outline for what your game is going to be. The name Dot turns out to be pretty accurate because the game doesn't include Zinaru and it certainly isn't great. So with all of that in mind, my rating for Dot is a PNG of a gold bar out of 10. Just like the ones in the game, it's both low effort and completely pointless. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the end of the video. A massive thank you to the channel members on screen and a special shout out to the very first Knight of the Holy Grail, Freaky Feline. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so for as little as a dollar per month. Just click the join button to see the available membership levels and perks. For a complete list of games covered so far and their ratings, check the description for a link to a spreadsheet covering all this and more, as well as a link to our new Discord community. Thank you for joining me on this weird gaming adventure through the depths of Steam, and until next time, take care.